Um, I want to bring in Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow. Mallory, I think we have you with us. I'm very interested to know how you are looking at this event that the Harris campaign is, is staging in Houston, where they're trying to put abortion and reproductive choice back on the front burner in terms of messaging in the home stretch of this campaign. And we know from advance remarks that we've been serviced by the campaign that the vice president is going to talk about the fact that even if women find themselves in states with better abortion protections than certainly in Texas— that they shouldn't feel any sense of comfort or that that's an insurance policy against a, a Trump abortion ban. Because if Trump is the president, once again, a federal abortion ban will affect every single state. Um, can, can you talk to me about how resonant the issue is in your state right now and whether or not you think the efforts tonight in Houston will resonate, will, will reach the, the voters that the Harris campaign is clearly hoping it does in such a key battleground? Yeah, Alex, I, I, absolutely. It will. You know, I, I think that something that has been so galling about Trump's approach to abortion is this idea that, well, he sent it to the states and that's what everybody wanted. So now we live in a country where, depending on your state boundaries, you may not have access to the very fundamental right of deciding if and when is right for you to get pregnant or the security to know that if that pregnancy goes wrong, which it does so much more often than most people realize, that you have access to health care. In Michigan, we codified uh, abortion access in our state constitution with a 2022 ballot initiative. That initiative collected more signatures than any other issue in state history. But Michiganders that I talked to this cycle, women in places like Macomb County or Downriver that have been trending away from Democrats, this is still a very salient issue because, you know, we don't live in a bubble where we only read about Michigan. We are reading about Amber Thurman in Georgia. We're reading about Ryan Hamilton in Texas sharing the story of finding his wife collapsed on the floor when she was denied care at the hospital. We've read stories about a 10-year-old girl from Ohio having to cross the border into Indiana, two of our neighboring states, after she was raped and found herself pregnant. So there is a very deep sense here in Michigan that that a right that we worked so hard for can be stripped away from us once again for the second time in just a short number of years. And women and frankly, their families are incredibly fired up. And for the vice president to go into Texas just sends the message that this is a national issue. Women's rights are universal. It should not matter where in this country you live. Um, that to uh, sort of put a finer point on on that very you know key observation, Mallory. The the event tonight in Houston has thirty thousand attendees, according to the latest report from the Harris campaign. And you know it is quite obvious that when you put Beyonce Knowles Carter on stage with Kamala Harris, the beginning and end of this event do not do not stay in Texas. What happens in Texas does not stay in Texas. There will be there are thirty thousand people who will see it live, but this will be seen and clipped on social media, across the internet, in the final days of this campaign, which is clearly exactly what the Harris campaign is going for. Um, Simone, we're going to hear shortly, uh, we're waiting for, I think, one of, I think, Andrea, the woman in mm -hmm. this very powerful Harris campaign ad about abortion that was released today. She'll be taking the stage. Beyonce, and I believe Beyonce's mother, will also be taking the stage momentarily. As we wait for them, Simone, I don't know if you had read about this, but this is one of the more galling instances, and there are so many, of Trump's uh, misinformation and disinformation campaign in this election. There is a new PAC called the RBG PAC, as in Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a Republican PAC that is was started on October 16th to help Trump win pro-choice voters by basically suggesting that Trump is aligned on the issue of abortion with the late great Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The ad features a photo of the two of them together and has, you'll see it right there on the screen, great minds think alike. This is, um, this is, this is a caption from the ad. It, they have launched two abortion themes, themed ads designed to fool people who care about abortion rights into believing that Trump doesn't have an extreme agenda on the issue of choice. Mm. Um, what? Mm. First of all, what's your reaction? And second of all, does that concern you? 
If I had edges, Alex, they would be snatched, okay? I just, I, I, I it is, it, I want to say it's unconscionable and unbelievable, but then I think about, I go back to, I'm a fellow at Georgetown this semester, and I teach my class on Mondays, and in my study discussion this past Monday, one of the things that came up was Donald Trump, as we were discussing our news of day, Donald Trump and his stance on abortion. And one of the students said, well, you know, there are strategists and reporters out there who would say Donald Trump has moderated his position on abortion this cycle if you just look at what he said. And I was like, well, if we just go off of these random statements, sure. But uh, I guess I could see how someone could make that case, but that does not line up with the reality of of what we know to be true, given everything Donald Trump has said and also what he has done previously and what he is saying he will do. So I just, I think that this is, this type of misinformation, it can be quite effective, unfortunately, because there are people out there, people who know better, well-meaning people, who will say, I, I don't know, I heard Donald Trump, and he said he wants to be the protector of women. He said Katie Britt told him about IVF, and now he's like, I'm with it. Alex, people, this, this is why people just can't read the headlines, and we have to be very specific so that folks are getting the facts so they can make informed decisions.